Hi friends, we are back with our today's questions. Today we'll be talking about uh, some questions related to biochemistry. Let me be clear once again that uh, these series of videos are very specific to the point only for the questions which are asked in the viva uh, during the practical examination sessions right we are not actually exploring the uh, detailed mechanism the detailed methodology or the detailed principles of all the tests or methods which we are discussing in our videos so uh, stay tuned with me uh, no doubt we'll be having a separate session of videos on uh, the basic mechanism and principles of all the methods tests stains and other things which we have discussed in our earlier lecture series so be with me, Professor Girish Kukreja here. So let's go with today's uh, series of questions. Yes, it seems more of biochemistry. Uh, you can see the word chromatography many times. Yes, so it is related with uh, chromatography. So let's go with the first one. Who introduced this particular term uh, chromatography? We have different types here. Paper chromatography, column chromatography, thin layer chromatography. Now we have advanced versions like HPL, CGLC and many more. So who actually introduced this particular term? Uh, it was a Russian botanist called as Sweat who introduced this particular term what is called as your uh, chromatography which actually means colored writing. Uh, Sweat, a Russian botanist, he used this term to describe the method of separating the uh, plant pigments on the column of the alumina. So when he was separating these plant pigments on the column of the alumina, it appeared like uh, writing with colors and therefore he introduced this particular term called as chromatography. So the term chromatography introduced by the Russian botanist Sweat. Let's go to the next one. What is the stationary phase in the paper chromatography? We generally perform paper chromatography for your um, amino acids, for sugars and many other compounds. So uh, what is actually the stationary phase? You have two. One is the mobile phase, another is the stationary phase. So stationary phase here is the water that is adsorbed between the cellulose fiber. So water adsorbed within these cellulose fibers actually this forms an excellent what is called as your stationary phase. So water adsorbed in the cellulose fibers is the basic stationary phase in this paper chromatography. Uh, the next one goes name the spray or we also call it as a developing reagent which is used in TLC for sugars. So the there are many used uh, to give one example you have aniline diphenylamine a reagent which is used as a developing or a spray reagent in a typical TLC of your sugars. I told there are many, we will discuss more in detail. How is the solvent selected for proper separation of the components in a paper chromatography? Like we have different solvent systems. As the compounds are separate, you see that uh, there are uh, different uh, solvent systems. Like one of the most common which you have is for amino acid, 4 is to 1 is to 5, butanol, acetic acid and water. You have many such uh, what you call as recipes of making these particular solvents. So how they really decide, right? It is empirical, I tell you, like uh, it is a trial and error and then you come to a consensus that this solvent will give a proper separation say for example you have a particular uh, solvent a and this particular solvent a when you use for separation of the components you find that most of them they go towards the solvent front most of your solutes which are there they move along with the solvent so here it is too soluble so the molecules or the components to be separated they are too soluble in this particular solvent say you have another particular solvent b when you tried uh, most of them they were near the origin so here they are too insoluble so now what you will do you will use a proper combination for a better separation so now you will take a proper mixture of the solvent a and solvent b and this proper combination will give a better resolution so a may sub they are getting solubilized so they are going towards the solvent b may they are all staying near the origin if you take a proper mixture probably they will get properly separated Next and the last one, which colored spots are observed after spraying with ninhydrin spray reagent, one of the most common reagents used for chromatography of amino acids. So yes, you have a purple colored spots which are observed uh, with amino acids like proline or hydroxyproline. Uh, you will find that these particular spots, they are of yellow color. So most or all others will give a purple colored complex. Whereas proline and hydroxyproline will give a yellow colored uh, what you call as complex. If you are using it for quantification in your biochemical test, not for chromatography, uh, you can go for what is called as measuring their absorbance, which can be done for purple at 570 and around 450 at the yellow one. So stay tuned with us for more on microbiology and biochemistry. Thank you.